Deion Sanders is about to have a run for his money with his Colorado's going against the long legendary rivals ah, Aaron Colorado State. What is it? The Rocky Mountain Showdown. Look, there's nothing better in college football than a dang rivalry. It gets blood flowing. It gets the heart pumping. It gets everybody jumping. But there's been some words said from not only Jay Norvell, like I talked about in my previous video, but also a few of Colorado State's standout players. And when I say standout, I think one of them has a chance to really do some things in the NFL, Mr. Troy Horton, and of course, number 18, I believe that's uh, uh, Nicolosi, Brandon Fowler, Nicolosi, the quarterback, he, he's got a little wiggle to him as well, he can sling it around the yard a little bit, so what we're going to do is take a peek at that, take a look at the matchup between Colorado and Colorado State, and I'm going to tell you why, I don't think Colorado is ready for Colorado State, I think that last last second, last ditch effort win um, against them last year, um, it's, it's put a bad taste in both of these players' mouths. I think uh, Colorado coming off the the, uh, the the deflating loss in Nebraska is probably not going to have this team in the best way, but I hope he proves me wrong. I'm a Dion guy. I want Colorado to do good. I want Shador to do good. I want Shiloh uh, to, uh, to uh, recover well, and I want, of course, Travis Hunter to be the superstar that he is, but Deion Sanders continues to leave his buffs, to leave his university completely unprepared for the game. I think he's going to do the same thing again against these rivals. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into it, okay? Got some things to say, to talk about, to hear about, react to. And and here is, I think, the the first thing, uh, what's it called? We're going to start with, with with Mr. Rami, uh, sorry, Miss Rami Bean. Um, and, and it's talking about Troy Horton, right? And, of course, Brandon Fowler, Nicolosi having some conversations about the Rocky Mountain Showdown and the, the upcoming matchup. And, of course, we see Mr. Dion Neon uh, um, saying that he is – kind of addressing those viral comments and doesn't want to give any smoke to it, but let's at least hear it, okay? They came out with that attitude as they were on top of the world. So I'm not going to be uh, a dumb and act like we don't know why people don't like Colorado. They're loud, they're flashy, they're boisterous, they're they're pumping their chest out, right? So when you do that, you're gonna people are going to want to knock you down, okay? Uh, Conor McGregor. Let's talk about Conor McGregor. I love talking about Conor McGregor. He talked all that ish. At the time, he was backing it up. And at the early part of his career, was considered a, a GOAT, a double champ. I know we're going off the UFC weeds, but what I'm trying to say is when you talk that talk and you back it up, it's not really much I can say. Now, when Conor McGregor was getting chucked at by the guy dang Dagestani Eagle and getting suplexed and whatnot and legs snapped in half, wasn't as phenomenal. And I think Colorado is in a similar situation. They're not coming off the heater of beating a team that they weren't supposed to beat in TCU, beating another team that people didn't think they had a chance with in Nebraska, and then coming into a rivalry game with as much juice as they had. You had that whole Travis Hunter injury that, that set it up. Yo, that was a... Before we get into more of these comments, we do have to say that as much as you uh, you might hate, uh, what's it called, uh, Colorado, and you might hate uh, uh, what they got going on, and, and you might uh, uh, have some issues with how they cook things and do things in a certain way situation, they they get you watching football, son. We was all up until 3 a.m. watching that Mountain West Pac-12 showdown, and I think I'm going to do the same thing if possible if it's that late. I think it's actually 3, 3 o'clock, but we'll, we'll look at that later, but hey, for as much as they are hated, you need a villain. You need a heel. If you don't have a good heel, it don't feel good to win. Now, that Nebraska win doesn't feel good for the Cornwallers as much if Colorado's not as loud. And I think Colorado State's going to embarrass them in the same way because that last win was full of emotion, and it was pretty close. But I'll let them continue. And this ain't no Cinderella story, so oh, we're doing for revenge. Yeah, they came out with that attitude and thought it was going to be a cakewalk. They saw the reports, 27 and a half points or whatever it was. Um, and they got a rude, rude awakening real quick. And I think it goes to show that uh, the hype, the media train, all that, it only gets you so far at the end of the I think we, I think we all know that, though. Like I, I, everybody kind of comes down on Colorado for being so up and not in in the in the media or whatever. But it's like it's it's Deion Sanders, dog. It's one of the most important people in college football, in football history of all time. What he's done to the game and his impact on the game. Um, anything he does, does in the way he does it. That, that double does it. Anything that Prime Time does and Coach Prime does is going to be uh have a bit of a flash of light on it. So 
I don't think that's anything, uh, what's it called, new, anything that's crazy. Um, I think that he's 100% right. But I think this is one reason why I might be wrong about my prediction when I get to that at the end of the game. I do think Colorado State's going to win. Um, but my prediction was involving, um, you know, the fact that uh, Colorado was coming in a little beat down. Now, undisciplined teams, when they, when they have a rough loss, they're going to look worse after the game. Now, a disciplined team, a passionate team, gets a tough loss, gets their ass smacked at them. They go and practice, and they get tackling drilled. They get ran to death, and then they come back with some action. Now, I'm hoping, again, I'm a Dion guy, but I can't support bad coaching. I can't support terrible offensive play calling. Um, so I can't support this until they at least try um, and, and at least – put up a good game. They can lose, but at least gain some respect. They didn't gain any respect in Nebraska. They need to gain some respect in Colorado State and do some things that, that are going to be effective. So um, I just, I don't know. I just don't think they're going to have the juice to go out and, and go out and, and beat these boys. But in, in all seriousness, man, you got to have the heel. You got to have some uh, a person that makes these wins and things feel better. Let's, let's hop back to what he was yapping about. At the day. You have to line up 11 guys against our 11 guys, and we'll find out who wants it more, and we'll see how far uh, Instagram followers gets them. Mm -hmm. Yo, people love, like, they getting these one-liners off. Dan Lanning, this ain't right. They're fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. I mean, hey, Dan, you should probably be worried about uh, struggling with Boise State, but that's a good line. Instagram followers. I, I like that. Football, I so. like that. At the end of the day, the millions of followers and fans that they then produced and got and celebrities that then jumped on their side because of who Deion Sanders is. At the end of the day, Deion Sanders ain't playing. It's those players playing. So those players better back up on what they speak about. Mm, telling that boy to back up to what they speak about. That is crazy. So, obviously, after those things come out, they're going to ask Dion some questions and things about that. And he says he's just not going to take that bait. Let's hop into this little situation here. Um, but I, I really like the fact that, you know, they came out. And shout out to the Pac-12 for trying to reconnect. I like the fact that they came out with a little sauce on them. Now, we got some comments here. If we let these boys talk like this and don't take care of business, we can. We can call this era a wrap. This is wild. And I think this is true. I think, this again, this is a Colorado fan saying that, yo, if we don't handle business, like, it's not going to be a great look. And, and I don't think it is going to be a great look. And this is why I think the the biggest reason why I think even if the conversation that I was talking about, a disciplined team that will come back and really, you know, be inspired after uh, uh, getting their ass kicked it, versus uh, an undisciplined team, I think the problem with Colorado State, or sorry, the problem for Colorado is that Colorado State is juiced up about this game. They are they've they've had this thing circled since last September, right? They as as soon as they lost that game, they circled it for this year, and and you better know it. Uh, you better know that they're coming. They've got things loaded up, and it's already a rivalry. It's not like they needed any other reason to 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 care about it, even if. You know, because Colorado State's not a, a world beater. Let's let's be honest here. Even in the Mountain West, they struggle a little bit. But uh, like, they don't need any other reason besides the historic rivalry. But now you add the flame to the fire of how things went last year, the bad blood between Deion Sanders and Jay Norvell. Jay Norvell's uh uh, what was it? I was about to say husband. I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to do that. Wife calling Shador Sanders and Colorado a bunch of b words. Um, it's not phenomenal. It's not great. It's not the most uh, phenomenal thing that you want done in all fashion situations and facets. So, um, but I, I don't think I can relate and, and confirm anything else that a, that a Buffalo fan has said other than this, because uh, this is going to be one of those respect games. Like I said, you know, I, I kind of talked about that. And, and when you're when you're at the top of this list of you know fewest rushing yards per game. Um, number one at 37.5, it, it's not, it, it doesn't bode well for you. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it doesn't look phenomenal for you. Th this isn't, and, and and going back to the actual game, because I, we, we, we talked about the comments, right? Um, and, and first, before we get into that, I do want to do a throwback. I came here to win games and play ball for the Rams. So this, this is the, remember, this is the same uh, little snippet where, Braden Fowler, Fire, whatever call, it, and Tory Horton. They said they they declined six hundred thousand dollars each to hit the transfer portal. So these are either some really committed dudes, 
or stupid, or one or the other. I'm hoping it's the committed part. So if you add this on top of the fire with it, it being Colorado and the fire with it being rivalry, I don't know if the same fire is there for Colorado. How many of those players that played in this last game are still there? I don't think many. And and, and Troy Horton is a dog, homie. They got some big boys on that defensive line. They look like size-wise, not execution-wise, some of the size on the interior defensive line, they got some big porky dogs in there. They, 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 I mean, they're, they're a little weak on the edges. They're a little weak in the secondary. But they've got some talent. And they've got some talent when it comes on the, on the outside uh, for the offense. But if you're going to go in as the fewest rushing yards per game, that, that's just not winning football. What, what is Miami of Ohio football's record? Let me just watch them be undefeated. <laughs> they're undefeated. They have the greatest, uh, what's it called, passing uh, attack of all time. Boom. What are you at? What are you at? Yeah, they're 0 and 1. They've only played one game. Um, that's pretty, pretty embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I threw this over here so we could talk about these comments. But yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. It, this is not great. You got you're a Houston. Houston is pretty bad. Um, and you know Oklahoma struggled with. Uh, you know what I'm saying. You got Temple down here. Kent stand. Not not a lot of phenomenal elite. A uh, uh, football teams going on right here. Let's let's pop into these comments addressed. Um, uh, uh, the viral Colorado State Colorado head coach James Evans isn't interested in getting into a war of words ahead of Saturday's rivalry against Colorado State. Despite losing to the Buffs 40 35 in overtime last season, Rams quarterback Braden Fowler and wide receiver had some choice words. We already saw those choice words. We owe them one. We're gonna murder them boys. All that good stuff. But Deion Sanders responded to the comments from Colorado State stars during his coach Thursday on Thursday. It makes it personal again. It makes you think like, oh, okay, because you analyze it as an adult. Kids don't. They just get mad, Sanders explained. You analyze it as an adult and you say, okay, I see why you said that. And you know what's behind it. But you try to understand that those are kids. Don't do it. You want to do it, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take that bait. That's too easy. While Dion didn't want to publicly address the comments from Colorado State quarterback Brandon Fowler um, and receiver Troy. Oh, his name is Bra- Oh, is, 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 is that the same dude with the three names? I think so. And Jenjen <laughs> Tory. Sorry, I call him Troy Horton. Tory Horton. Golly, I'm I'm butchering these boys' name. He did acknowledge that he should uh he showed the video to his team. Of course, of course, Sanders when asked if he played the comments for the team, they wanted to. They asked me at breakfast, Coach, you saw what they said? Yeah, I did. Last year's game was a classic that ended with the Colorado coming on top. Horton was all over the field during the loss, catching 16 passes for 133, and that dude was being an absolute dog. Right, so let's actually talk about some of the X's and O's and the football things of uh, of situations. Now, um, Tory uh, Horton um, is not off to the hottest of years, but then again, you played two games. You played against Northern Colorado, and then against my Longhorns, where we got dang whipped it out on you. But in all seriousness, when I went and you go watch that t- uh, tape in the film, what you see, especially uh, against Texas, is is a team with some size on was a team whose whose defensive line has some things in places in in, in spaces to be able to, to execute some things. They're not the biggest, they're not the baddest, not the greatest uh, uh, in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But I think that they've got enough size to disrupt an offensive line that's you know the bottom of college football, especially an offensive line and a team that can't run the ball in any way, shape, form, or fashion. If you're not going to be able to control this defensive line or control this game, get these fat boys tired. Um, it's not going to look great for you to to do anything else. Um, they got some speed on the outside too. The second door d- doesn't look elite by any stretch of the imagination. But to be honest with you, um, you know when you're struggling with North Dakota State, I think that going in uh, to Colorado State with them being juiced up um, is not going to be the best thing. So this is probably going to be uh, uh, the I think the biggest challenge for Colorado. Now I think that this is also Colorado's when they're going to have the most juice though. Right. Because you coming off this loss, like I said, I'm hoping that you really are coming off it. I'm hoping that there's some people from uh, a lot more players from that last year's team. There's not besides Travis Hunter, Shador and, you know, the likes of that the kicker. Um, there's not a lot of people who were there last year. Um, um, but I, I hope they can find a grudge and do that. If not, I think it's going to get really, really 
nasty. So looking at this, uh, uh, Mr. Fowler Nicoloso is uh, 28 45, 261, 5.8 average, four at long, one touchdown, one interception, one sack. And this is between the two games as well. Um, so they haven't really been able to put up any crazy numbers over here. Um, when you go over to the, the buffs, obviously Shador, you know, spreading it around. But I mean, if you have to put up 400 yards against North Dakota state, maybe it's not the great thing. Uh, D Dallin Hayden, sorry, I, don't, I forgot. I hope I'm pronouncing his name. He's only gotten 14 carries. Let me, uh, let me, let me compare this. Let me compare this. I mean, it's just night and day dog. L look at this. So the leading rusher over two games in, in which one was a loss and one w was almost an overtime uh, loss. You've, you've only given your top running back 14 carries, a combined number one and two are at what? What that is? What that is? What that is? What that is? 30 something? What, what, how, how, how many that is? How many that is? 23? Yeah. So, like, um, is that 23? I can't count, dog. Six, three. All right, yeah. So twenty-three. God, leaves with my butt. Um, uh, you you giving up twenty-three carries and the number one guy is at thirty-five. Justin Marshall, only one hundred seventy-three yards. But but this is what I'm talking about with sticking with the run game. Average four point nine. His average is three point seven. Um, which you know that's phenomenal too. His long is seventeen. The leading rushers long is seventeen. The the big the second long leader is Shador Sanders with 11 yards. So the biggest, <laughs> the two biggest, sorry, these are the three biggest runs that, that the Colorado Buffaloes have had in order. 17 yards, 11 yards, 9 yards, oh, and 6 yards. Uh, or, well, I went 4, so 9 yards. So that that is an insult to football in the game that, that that can be played so just off that stat alone just off the fact that i think colorado state's got a little more juice they got a little more people that are a little more passionate about it people turn down six hundred thousand dollars there they're talking that smack and really getting after it give me colorado state over colorado make it 24 to 13 your bucket we'll see you then i hope i'm wrong i hope Deion sanders proves me wrong i hope the colorado boys come out there on fire. I hope Deion Sanders learns how to, I don't know, coach a game. I hope the offensive play calling is anywhere coherent um, that makes any uh, any lick of sense in the world um, because it's been a real big disappointment from Colorado. But hey, get in the comments. Let me know how you're feeling. Um, give me your, uh, what's it called, predictions for the game. Um, how you feeling about Deion, the coaching? How you feel about Colorado State? Are you a Colorado State fan this weekend? Let me know, man. You be easy, you be breezy, you be beautiful. Like this video if you like it, dislike if you don't like it. And we'll see you next time.